Saint Gonzalo Gracia, the second patron of the Archdiocese of Bombay. The coastal land of Vasai, situated to the north of Mumbai in India, attracted the Portuguese colonizers way back in the 16th century. Having entered into a treaty with Bahadur Shah, they built a fort and settled there. Around 1557 AD, this land gave birth to Gonzalo Gracia, the canonized saint of India. His mother was a second generation convert from the region. Some scholars think that he may have had a Portuguese father. Others consider him to be purely native. He was brought up in a mixture of Portuguese and native culture. The children of that time were thought to know, love and live the Christian faith at home. Gonzalo may have also prayed in the Holy Name Church in the fort. All this was going to influence Gonzalo's future plans. Gonzalo was educated by the Jesuits at Vasai Fort. When school finished, the children would go back home singing the catechism lesson in the streets. Gonzalo was given not only academic education and initiated into music, but also given a firm foundation in the faith, which would grow in spite of the persecution at the hands of some Muslims. It was a Jesuit priest, Father Sebastian, who was to make a deep impact on Gonzalo. He probably impressed upon Gonzalo about the Jesuits and the Japanese mission which was begun by St. Francis Xavier. There was a great need of people to work in this mission. So the Jesuits accepted even lay persons as catechists. At the young age of 15 or 16, Gonzalo also volunteered to go to Japan as a catechist. Around 1572 AD, Father Sebastian led a delegation of people in a ship headed for Japan. The youngest member was Gonzalo, willing to leave his homeland and embark on a difficult journey. The voyage to Japan lasted at that time about 70 days. Gonzalo devoted this time to studying the Japanese language and customs. He surprised even the natives with his fluency in Japanese. Gonzalo's zeal and his fluent Japanese made him a very successful preacher of the gospel on St. Sebastian's journey for over eight years. He was able to convince even Japanese religious scholars. He also served as interpreter. During this time, Gonzalo repeatedly asked to be admitted into the Jesuit order. We do not know why, but his request was not granted. So for some time, he did not think about his vocation and became a merchant. But while on a business trip to Manila, he felt again the call to become a religious. In the Philippines, he was admitted as a novice with the Franciscans and made his solemn profession as a lay brother on the 8th of July, 1588. In the monastery, he worked in the kitchen and dining room and looked after the supplies. He encountered many Japanese in Manila, with whom he could talk because he knew Japanese. He would visit their sick and help the poor amongst them. Gonzalo returned to Japan with his superior, Father Pedro Baptista, as official interpreter of the missionaries. Emperor Hideyoshi was so impressed by Gonzalo's speech that he permitted the Franciscans to open a house in Japan. Gonzalo became the contractor of this mission, busying himself with construction work for the Franciscans. He built churches, convents and other Franciscan houses in peaceful locations. The suffering of the local people, especially the poor and the sick, deeply stirred the heart of Gonzalo. He and the other Franciscans worked hard to alleviate the sufferings of the people, especially of lepers. He opened hospitals for them and used to carry the lepers to the hospital on his own shoulders. 
the work of the monks made a deep impression on all the people and instilled in them an interest in Christianity. However, the rising number of people and feudal lords adhering to Christianity and intensive Christian propaganda, as well as the destruction of temples by converts, earned for the Christians the displeasure of the Emperor Hideyoshi. Church property was confiscated and the work of the missionaries was slowed down. But they could not be sent away because there was no ship leaving immediately. The Emperor's anger subsided a little. But some of his ministers were rabidly anti-Christian and resented the growth and influence of the missionaries. One day, when Hideyoshi was in a drunken stupor, one of his ministers poisoned his mind against the Christians. He got permission from Hideyoshi to destroy a church and use the value in materials for other buildings. On one occasion, there was a particularly massive earthquake in the region and many people were buried alive. There was pain and destruction everywhere. Emperor Hideyoshi, who had to flee from the region, was greatly shocked to see the devastation, the loss of wealth and fortune, and his kingdom desolate. It was noticed that the only group of people that did not suffer much during this calamity was the Christians. The statue of St. Francis in the monastery had saved them. It was covered with a drop of blood. However, some of the corrupt court officials used the occasion to poison Hideyoshi's mind against the Christians. He tightened up the measures, particularly against the monks who were coming in from the Philippines to evangelize. In June 1596, a Spanish ship, the San Felipe, coming in from the Philippines, was caught in a storm and stranded in Tosa. The speech of the Spanish captain pilot was unfortunately interpreted to mean that the Spaniards had come to conquer Japan. When this news reached Hideyoshi, he was greatly angered. He succumbed to the pressure of one of his officials and decreed on 11th December 1596 that the missionaries and Christians should be executed. The soldiers rounded up 26 people, six Franciscans with Gonzalo among them, three Jesuits and 17 lay people. The soldiers asked two young recruits to run away but they decided to stay on for the love of Jesus Christ. Before leaving, they celebrated the Eucharist together and filled themselves with courage to die for the sake of Jesus Christ. At the end of the Eucharist, the soldiers led them into prison. These condemned prisoners had to endure a way of the cross, which lasted for a few weeks. They were dragged through towns and villages and submitted to ridicule, humiliation and severe hardships. On 5th February 1597, the group reached the hill of Nagasaki, praising God with their hearts. They were fastened to crosses. They even had spears thrust into them and their blood gushed out onto the onlookers. Gonzalo and his companions died giving glory to God. This group of martyrs was beatified in 1627 and Pope Pius IX canonized them in 1862. The witness of these martyrs has not been forgotten. Today, on Nishizaka Hill, Nagasaki, there is a beautiful monument commemorating the martyrdom of Gonzalo Gracia and his companions.